And that didn't quite work as good as I was hoping. This is a good bar, I like this. So when shooting product reviews, I generally like to get some pretty close up detailed shots of whatever product I'm actually showcasing. But the only macro lens I have is the 24 to 105 and sometimes the macro function on this just doesn't get it close enough for my liking. So that is why I decided to try out the Canon 100mm f2.8 IS to see if it was the right lens for me. All right, so we're gonna set up a little mini macro studio here in the kitchen. We're gonna have the slider here, the products here. We'll set up the camera on here, and we'll see what kind of macro shots we can get with this uh, 100 mil. All right, so today we are shooting on the Canon C200. Get some nice, crispy, crispy shots with this macro lens. Okay, now because this camera is far so heavy, if I bring it down too much, it just starts falling. I have to raise up the actual products that we're shooting. So I've just found this little coffee jar that I'm gonna prop all my products up on top of. But now the backdrop's pretty bad, so I'm just gonna quickly grab something to put behind it to make it more of a neutral backdrop. Now this obviously isn't the most amazing backdrop, but it's dark enough so when it's out of focus, you won't actually notice it, and it will just look like a black backdrop anyway. Now my initial thoughts on the Canon 100mm f2.8 is that it's a very, very solid lens and the macro capabilities are really, really good. Plus the addition of image stabilization means that you could potentially use it for different scenarios instead of just macro, you could use it as a handheld bearer lens as well, potentially. However, after using it, you can tell that it's one of Canon's older lineups with the image stabilization and the focusing system just not keeping up with the lenses that are coming out today. All right, so I've just got a whole bunch of random products to shoot with this macro lens and also grab some food out of the fridge and get some cool macro shots of that as well. So I'm gonna be lighting today with the Nanlite Pavo Tube 26C, as well as the Aperture MC to give a bit of color pop as well. All right, so the nan light died, so we're gonna to have to grab another little pocket light, and hopefully this one is bright enough. Let's go for a strawberry, hey? So I'm getting a bit hungry now, so I'm gonna do a slow motion shot, pouring some, a bit of a nut mix into a bowl. See what it looks like. All right, let's just give it a crack. Yeah, that didn't quite work as good as I was hoping. This is a good bar, I like this. Being originally released in 2009, it is 11 years old now, but the optics inside it still keep up with some of the L-series lenses that are being produced today. And this really just shows the hard work that Canon puts into developing these L-series lenses. Now for its time back in 2009, this lens was an absolute game changer. It was one of, if not the first mid to telephoto macro lens that actually included image stabilization. Oh my God, why is someone grinding? I'm trying to record a review. Now the build quality of this lens is super duper solid and only weighing in at 625 grams. It's not too heavy and also feels really good in the hand. Having all internally moving parts means that it is weather sealed so you can shoot in some so, so weather. And it can focus to a crazy minimum focusing distance of 0.3 centimeters to get amazing one-to-one -one shots like these. Now the shots I was getting were actually pretty good, but because I'm not a macro photographer, I later learned that you typically don't shoot wide open at f2.8, mainly because you want to get more than just a single dust particle in focus in your shots. So I took this advice on, I went back and did some more shots and I went the opposite direction. I went all the way down, closed it down to f32 and the shots actually weren't that sharp. So I went somewhere in the middle, settled at I think it was f11 and got shots like this. Now it's crazy to see objects this close up because there's so many micro details that you literally never ever see. Now the stabilization on this lens is pretty good, but you can't expect it to be as good as newer lenses coming out today in 2020. This lens has a hybrid image stabilizer, which means that it has two stops of correction during one times magnification, three stops at 0.5 times magnification, and four stops during normal shooting. So basically what this means is that if you are shooting macro, you'll get two stops of stabilization and pretty much any time else you'll be getting the full four stops. However, compared to newer lenses that also have four stop stabilization, it's definitely not stable. 
Now I was hoping that I would be able to double up on this lens and use it as a handheld B-roll lens, but unfortunately the image stabilization just isn't stable enough. It's all right if you're just trying to get nice stable shots, but as soon as you're trying to get some movement in there, this is where it starts to break apart. The focusing on this lens in photo mode is ridiculously sharp and I never had any problem actually missing focus when taking photos. However, as soon as I threw it into video mode, this is where some problems started emerging. In video mode, the focus slows down a lot and it missed the mark on several times when I was shooting close up. I noticed that it would often pull focus in the wrong direction when trying to go from something closer to further away. And it got confused a lot of the time and it takes a while to refocus again. However, the lens does have a focus limiting switch which can make a big difference. The switch allows you to limit the focus from either full range 0.5 meters to infinity or 0.3 meters to 0.5 meters. And this does make a big difference when you're shooting video to stop it doing those big focus pulls in the wrong direction. Now it's still not perfect, but it does help a lot. The reason why this is a big problem when shooting video is that if it pulls focus in the wrong direction when you're shooting and you're waiting for it to come back and it's taking a while, you might miss whatever you're actually shooting. And yes, you could manually focus to bring it back, but it kind of defeats the purpose of using autofocus in the first place. Now practically, it's an awesome lens to use. Being able to punch into micro details on objects is an absolute blast, but for me, it's just not versatile enough to be in my everyday kit. Now, if the stabilization was a little bit better, like say on the 85 f1.4, then you could use it as a B-roll lens and it would be way more versatile. But in saying that, if you are a macro photographer and you're looking for a tack sharp lens, it's just over a thousand dollars, then this is a pretty good lens for that price. And if you don't need the image stabilization and you want to save a few pennies, then Canon also makes a non-IS version. It isn't an L-series lens, so the optics won't be as good, but you'll save a few pennies there as well. Now, I'm also working on this insane bubble macro photography video with this lens, so if you want to check that out when it's done, I'll leave a link up here for you. If you did enjoy this review, then consider liking and subscribing. If you want to find out more about this lens or where to buy it, I'll leave a link down below. And as always, stay creative and just be you. See ya.